Hi, everybody. I just want to share this tip with you on how you can quantize MIDI in a unique way that actually gives you a lot more control over the original fill of the performance. And it also serves a few other um, purposes. One is it works a lot better for material that is more complex. Um, for example, we're going to be working with this drum clip here, and it's got a lot of rolls in it, which would not sound good being quantized at all. And so it, it works better in um, this sort of scenario. The other thing that this approach is good for is when the performance wasn't originally played to a metronome or a click track. Um, so let me go ahead and play back what I've got here. This performance was performed on some V drums, and you'll definitely hear how it drifts in and out from the metronome. Here it is. Okay, so um, you can hear how it's drifting in and out. So the approach we're going to take here is we are going to identify for Pro Tools all of the downbeats. So anytime a drum is hit on beat one, two, three, or four, we are going to identify that. And because we are going to do that, that's going to allow Pro Tools to tell us what the tempo changes are throughout this performance, and then we'll have access to being able to adjust those tempo changes. So to start, the first thing to do would be to, if you're working with a MIDI track, to go over and change it from being a tick-based track to a sample-based track. Um, and by default, it, um, most of the instrument and MIDI tracks will be tick-based, and audio tracks are usually by default sample-based. But if you're quantizing audio this way, you would also want to make sure that those are sample-based as well. The other thing is to go to tab to transient. Um, so turn this on so that as you hit tab, it'll tab right up next to the note um, instead of tabbing to the end of the clip. And then we are going to be using identify beat. So basically, you want to be in slip mode, click right before a beat. So here we've got kind of a pickup of a roll into the downbeat, but the kick drum is actually the downbeat. So we're going to tab right up to that kick drum, and I'm going to press Command-I, and then I am going to press over on the arrow keys, so to the right, and I am just going to... Um, identify this as measure two beat one and you can see how the numbers automatically zero out to the right now you'll notice that i always just change this middle number as i go through and identify beats the reason why is because pro tools will keep track of the measures for me automatically and i'll explain a scenario of that here in just a minute and as i um, enter this number you can see how the later numbers zero out. So here we go. We're going to identify beat two there. And in fact, that wasn't quite beat two. So you can click and drag these markers if you miss any of them. Now, you pro you're probably noticing this does take a little bit more time to, to do this approach, but in my opinion, I think it's worth it. Okay, so here's an example right here. You can see how this downbeat should be measure 4 beat 1. And so you may think that you need to change the measure numbers, but check this out. If I come over here and tell it that it's beat 5, Pro Tools is smart enough to know that there aren't five beats in a 4-4 measure, so it knows that I meant to say measure 4 beat 1. So watch this. I'll hit OK, and sure enough, it lines it up right. And one thing that's helping me too is I've made sure that I'm in bars and beats ruler mode and that um, I am set at quarter notes, and that helps me see... Also, where 
the downbeat should be. So here is beat four. Okay, so there we go. So now we can expand our um, tempo ruler, and you can see all the time changes now that are made. Um, but now the metronome is lined right up with what we've got, even though it's speeding up and slowing down. So the next step, now that we've mapped the tempo or the time changes to the performance, is now we want to go ahead and change back to tick-based for our tracks and um, I now will hold down command and click on this little plus button to change my ruler to tempo events which allows us to now be able to change the tempo here so if you wanted to be ultra conservative with maintaining as much of the natural performance as possible then maybe a um, an approach for you would be to just find where you have some of these peaks and valleys and just bringing them a little bit closer together and you can see as, I, as I'm doing that how the it's nudging the notes around a little bit and just making them more accurate overall. Um, but in this scenario, I'm actually going to be a little bit more extreme, and I'm just going to go ahead and erase all of the tempo changes here and go ahead and set this to 120. So um, this isn't going to be perfect, but you're going to hear how this is way better than what it was. Let me go ahead and play this back. All right, so much, much better, but still a few quirky little places. So um, I'm just going to pull up my quantize window. So that was option zero. Um, on a Mac, and um, I'm going to choose um, a strength of probably somewhere around 70 for me, but of course, pick what, what you like. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to listen to places that just don't feel quite right still, and I'm going to just quantize those moments. So, so like right in here, right here at the beginning is just not good. So I'm going to go ahead and quantize this section. Yeah, much better. Um, so these kick drums a lot of times are too close together and a little bit late. Like right there. So I'm just going to apply a little bit there. Again right there. You can hear how they're too close together. Now that fill would be a nightmare to quantize and it sounds great now. I think it works great. Okay, so a little weird right in here. And a little bit weird right there too. And a little bit right there.
and you can hear how these last notes are too close together as well. So, okay, cool, much better. So, in any case, hopefully that'll help out um, with a lot of your projects. Thanks, take care.